guys, what's up? This is your girl Madeline Berry here with Glory Attic Chronicles. Happy New Year again. This is 2014. We are stepping into a new time, a new season. So, so excited to be on the journey with you. Um, it's going to be an amazing year. I already know it. God has been talking to me uh, individually, like just giving me different encouragements and confirmations as well as uh, different people who are, you know, kind of in alignment and just talking uh, about what God is saying to them about the new year. And it's just all in just perfect line with um, how I feel like God has, has been talking to me. And so um, it it is it is really a great year. 2014, you need to put your expectations on at level like the highest possible <laughs> and then raise it up some more because God is all about um, fulfilling expectations this year and uh, taking you to places that you've, you've always wanted to go. So you need to be on the lookout, be in expectation at all times for your opportunities, your doors of opportunity to open up um, for new revelation from him, um, a new flow of, of insight and revelation and wisdom uh, coming from him so that you can be better equipped to handle your daily lives. Uh, and, and just just be on high alert for the greatness of God to be um, uh, seen through you, to be able to be used by him in any situation, because you never know how he wants to use you. You just have to be available to be used. So having said that, let's jump into today's lesson. We're continuing our study on the armor of God, and uh, we're reading Rick Renner's book called Dress to Kill. And uh, this week we are uh, studying or just talking about the helmet of salvation. We're coming out of Ephesians 6 verse 17. The beginning of it says, and take the helmet of salvation. Uh, it continues to say, in the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So this week we're going to talk about the helmet of salvation. Next week we're going to talk about the sword of the spirit and then the final week, we'll be talking about the lance of prayer or intercession. So I'm excited about we have about three more weeks to go. Um, I may do a short conclusion uh, after that, but um, it's it's been amazing. I've been had so much fun and I've learned so much. I mean, it's this, this book. I'm telling you guys, I say it every single time almost. If you don't have this book in your library, you should get this book in your library. It's something that you can always go back to um, and share with others because it's so much great insight on um, the Roman soldier's uh, armor and how it's so, um, because of the time period it was, uh, you know, Paul wrote it in, was so appropriate to what God was talking to him about um, armoring us with God's armor, which has all of these components connected to it. And when he talks about the full armor, it's not just one piece, not, you know, half of it. It's the entire thing. And each piece has a specific, um, a specific, um, purpose that, um, causes the Roman soldier and the, the body of Christ who are wearing the armor, to um, be able to be victorious in every area that leaves no uh, crack in your armor that where the enemy can sneak in and, and sneak, you know, slits where he can jab you with a knife or anything, but solid coverage all the way around. And then we have each other, you know, standing next to, we're standing next to each other, fully armored with shields up, and we're able to advance the kingdom together. So as we talk about today, the helmet of salvation, um, the initial thing that, that Rick, Rick first started talking about was how the Roman soldier's helmet was like fabulous. It was, um, you couldn't ignore it if you saw it. If you saw like if it was a parade or something and they're walking down the street, the, their helmets were so masterfully adorned. They were ornate um they were um they were uh they had like engravings on them you might find like a a picture of animals and all types of things carved into them and then some of them them were even made to look like animal heads you know like an elephant or a horse or or or, or something like an um 
like I can't even remember, but he was just talking about how, you know, some of they were just flamboyant. They were just out there. But not to mention just that. Then they had a plume going down the middle of the helmet. Um, and it was usually some bright color, like just eye popping color. Um, and it ended up with like a tail on the back of it going down the neck. I mean, going down the back of the soldier, um, you know, on the back of his uh, of his breastplate. And um, and so here you have, you know, this this soldier who's fully armored. But the thing that you see is like his helmet is so well adorned that you're going like this guy stands out. You know, who is this guy? You know, and um, the the way the way he was uh, adorned, that helmet was was fixed was so that. He could not be ignored. You had to pay attention to him, but it was also very functional. Um, one of uh, Rick Renner's um, quotes, first quotes that he said that really caught my attention was that when a person is confident of his salvation and when he is walking in the powerful reality of all that salvation means for him, that person is noticeable. That is a power pack statement because salvation is... Uh, a fullness, um, being uh, stepping into salvation, receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, um, gives you everything that Jesus is. You know, Jesus comes to live inside of you, so you become the house where Jesus lives. You know, the presence of God. God dwells inside of you, and everything about Him is now on you and in you. And so. Um, Understanding what salvation does for 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 you will cause you to embrace the reality that you can walk free from all things that you did before you were saved. You can um, can embrace the reality that you can live a debt free existence. You can um, step out of out of any. Um, Anything that you've been in bondage to can be delivered and um, just made free from anything that, that was holding you back because salvation is freedom. Freedom from every um, every evil thought toward you or condemn, condemning words against you or anything that could come against you, uh, anything that would hold you down and keep you in a spe specific um, part of your life, um, trying to not allow you to go forward. Salvation allows you to drop it all and move forward, just step out of that and step into your liberty. And so um, walking around with a full knowledge of that will cause people to, to, to pay attention to you. It's funny because uh, I, was, uh, I was out riding my bike with, with one of my friend's daughters the other day, and um, I was just having fun, you know, um, riding with her and uh, up and down the street and so we see this this car pass us and it's these two girls inside the car and they had bikes on their back I'm thinking they're going to visit somebody since it's around the holiday so you know they're driving kind of slow maybe they didn't know where they're going we we're on the other side of the street so we just you know waved as they, as they were passing by and smiled at them so and um, so you know we just kept riding we weren't really paying attention to the girls but then um, maybe later on um, we were we were riding at at the end of the street, and they came back because I thought they had you know they had gone. It was it had been maybe ten minutes or so, and I didn't see them anymore because it's not a long street. So they um they were back at they came back. I guess they circled around the the block and came back again after maybe ten minutes. And when we were you know at the the spot where we were going to turn around and come back down the street. They kind of flagged us because I was like, oh, that's the two girls that you know I saw earlier. I'm like, well, maybe they're lost and they need directions or something. So I'm being me and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And they're smiling. Hi. They get out of the car and they, you know, compliment on my compliment me on my smile and introduce themselves and all of this. And, you know, they were like, we just saw you smile and we thought we just need to meet you. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> so it turns out that they were um, they were. Mormons um, and they were you know wanting to talk to people whatever and so they were like we want to talk to you about Jesus I was like 
Jesus is my bestie. He's awesome. You know, and they're like, oh my gosh, we really like you. <laughs> it was hilarious. So we stood there and talked for like five minutes. Um, and um, it's funny to me because I was just, you know, hi, how you doing? And so just from the smile and waving and just having a happy countenance because that's what comes with Jesus. The joy of Jesus is on me and the levity that I, you know, have about me is like, you know, it's cool. I'll, I'll smile at you and then wave at you because I'm from the South anyway. So that's what we do. You know, sitting of course you wave at people you don't know. Who is that? I don't know, but it's just polite to wave. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> so, um, that's what happened. And, um, they want to come and talk to me. And I'm like, come, let's talk about Jesus. Now, I don't know how you look at Jesus, but I know how I look at Jesus. And, you know, we can just talk about Jesus. No, no big deal. You know, let's let's just have a conversation. So, you know, I think that salvation causes us a knowledge and an understanding and an embracing of the reality of your salvation gives you um, this attractiveness that people will be drawn to you because you lift up the name of Jesus. And he said, when he's lifted up, all will be drawn to him. So, um, as you know, we walking down the street and people are waving at us or looking at us instead of having the big city mentality of what are you looking at? Just embrace the fact that there's a light on you and in you. And, um, because you understand your salvation that you have a right and a privilege to introduce other people to that light, to the uh, the knowledge of salvation, to enter, allow people to be introduced to a loving, faithful God who will never leave or forsake us and who is our hope for our lives, you know, for the future, for our present, for everything. And so that's what salvation will do. It will make you noticeable. People won't be able to take their eyes off. You walk into rooms and everybody goes, Whoosh, who's that? You know, and it's not anything that you're wearing, you know, specifically. You might have on a beautiful outfit and, you know, have everything to the nine, everything beautifully done. Um, but shining brighter than what you look like externally is this internal light, brightness, that people are drawn to because it's missing in their lives and they can recognize what's missing and they're attracted to that. So that salvation is is so important. And so going back to the helmet, um, obviously it's worn on the head and it was worn as protection. Now it's much like, you know, um, sports today, like uh, American football, they wear helmets so that when they crash into each other, <laughs> they won't break their heads and pieces but you know uh they still anyway so they won't break their heads in pieces i'll end it right there and um like race car drivers wear helmets you know um some other athletes wear helmets on i know batters wear helmets when they're they're at bat and baseball and i mean just different people like extreme sports people you know who are doing things that that might cause them to hit their heads like bikers or um um, uh, winter sports like skiing and um, snowboarding and stuff like that. So, you know, all of that stuff is done to protect the head. Helmets are worn to protect the head. And Roman battle, or in Roman times, or when Paul was writing about this, he was um, aware that if a Roman soldier went on the field without a helmet, it's very likely that he would not live because his head would be cut off. And not only was his helmet in place, um, that could, because they had like um, weapons like battle axes and other things that they would just, you know, go straight to the, you know, straight to the head, boom, chop you. And I'm not trying to, you know, make it brutal or anything, but it's just real. This is how they fought. And so, um, the helmet was very, very important and it protects the mind. The mind is the place where the enemy wants to wage battle with you. We've talked about this throughout this whole series. The only battle exists in our mind and the mind is where the enemy wants to defeat you because if he can get your mind he can get the rest of you because he knows that the mind is a central pos um, position for everything about you you know you, you think something before you do anything first comes the thought 
And so if you accept thoughts from the enemy and start meditating on those, then your life will follow those thoughts. And so if you do the opposite and just think on the things of God consistently and speak those things, then your life will follow the things of God. And so it's just very important because the helmet was just like, if he didn't wear that, he would die, which is the way we need to wear our salvation. <laughs> if you don't continually have a good understanding about what Jesus has done for us and how when we accepted it on uh, sal- when we receive salvation by accepting Jesus, um, that um, we were protecting or we were able to be free from all of the bondages of the world system. Um, if you don't like embrace that, then, you know, you could do something and then the sin consciousness could try to kick in and the enemy would tell you, oh, he's not going to, God's not going to forgive you for this. This is horrible. You are a horrible person. You should have not done that. How can you ever forgive yourself? How can you think they're going to forgive you? They're not going to forgive you. They're not going to like you anymore. I mean, he'll just start piling them on thoughts, one thought after the next thought, after the next thought, after the next thought. And nothing will change until you say something. Now, what you say is very important. And what you say needs to be according to the word of God. But if you don't say something that's according to the word of God, if you come into agreement with those thoughts, you just gave him an opening into your mind to start working that angle. And once he get, gets that, he's not satisfied with one spot. He's going to expand his territory because that's what people do in, in warfare. They're always about expanding their territory or defending their territory. And so... I think it's just really very important for us to get a revelation of of salvation. Now, salvation um, is is uh, it comes from the word sozo um, and another word soteria. Um, both of them connect and they mean uh, in similar things like you know salvation sozo to be healed, delivered, set free, or made whole, and that's in your whole mind, soul, and body. You know, that's what salvation does. Now, initially, your soul is not, you know, totally saved. So your spirit becomes brand new and it's totally, completely in the image of Christ himself. And it's a process of you renewing your mind, which is where that whole process begins in your mind under that helmet of salvation, because you have to renew your mind to the things of God, which then starts to have an effect on your soul, man. Your body follows wherever your mind and your soul are going to go. Your spirit and your soul are going to go. So um, if you are allowing your spirit to lead, a Holy Spirit to lead your spirit, and um, getting your soul in alignment, then your body is just going to automatically follow. So um, it's like... Warfare is is where you, your strongholds a bit. Um, I mean, your brain, your mind, is where the the strongholds are built. Strongholds are like thought castles. They could be um, like a prison, or they could be like a a fortress. A fortress is designed to keep people out. A prison is designed to keep people in. And both ways on a stronghold, um, they they it has the same effect. You know, it could have either the, a way of keeping you isolated from the rest of the people around you who can help you, or it could keep you locked in a prison where you can't get beyond a certain point because it's keeping you in there. And so um, it's so just all of this stuff happens in our minds. And if we just get the revelation that salvation has the ability to free us from the negative thought patterns of the world system and the uh, the enemy strategies to to basically kill us one thought as a, at a time. And so, just remember Second um, Corinthians ten four and five, where it talks about taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and and all of that stuff and so I mean I mean that is a very very important verse in regards to how to combat the devil in times when your mind is being bombarded with negative thoughts or thoughts that don't line up with God's word so when you take them captive you basically you lock the thoughts up in prison and you basically 
um, stand guard over that thing with the word of God. You speak the word every time that negative thought comes. You speak the word that is contrary or that defeated whatever you're hearing from the enemy, the promise that God made to you. And so uh, one of the other quotes Rick says is that your helmet of salvation provides you with all kinds of God-given attributes and benefits. It gives you deliverance from sin, uh, salvation from hell, divine protection, preservation, healing, wholeness, and complete soundness of mind. In other words, God has given you all that you need to withstand every assault of the great deceiver, Satan himself. And that is very encouraging because there, God would not send you out into battle. He would not equip you. Um, I mean, he wouldn't give you salvation if he didn't know that it's going to take care of everything you need it to do. And so um, you have the whole armor, but on top of your head to protect your mind, to keep your mind sound. Do you remember in um, 2 Timothy 1.7, um, Paul was telling Timothy, hey, you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of um, power and love and a sound mind. That means a saved mind, a healed mind, a delivered mind, a mind that has been set free and made whole. And um, he was like, you have saved brains, saved, delivered from incorrect thinking of the world system or incorrect thinking of, of how things work because of how you were raised. Um, none of that is, is relevant when you step into the kingdom and begin to renew your mind to the things of Christ and allow the the work of salvation that Jesus completed at the cross, in the in the tomb, in the hollow of the earth, and then when he ascended, he did the work, and all we have to do is receive it. And it's nothing that we can do to 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 earn it. He's already done it for us, and all we have to do is accept it. And so, I just want to encourage you today that your helmet is so very important. Um, and if you don't know fully about what your salvation does for you, um, spend some time studying it. You know, it's a new year. Um, if you've not been able to fully engage with God uh, over the last years, let this be the year that you start. Let this be the year that you take an opportunity to get to know God and um, spend time just kind of asking him what to read. You might not know where, where to start reading in your Bible. Um, but if you just ask a question and ask him for an answer. Maybe you'll you get an impression, or somebody will you know. Maybe you'll watch TV, uh, someone on TV who's preaching or something, and they'll they'll take you to a a scripture that you know it really resonates with you, and you go, okay, well let's start right here. You know, he'll give you a starting point, and he'll guide you through it. So you just have to rely on Holy Spirit to be your teacher because that's what he is. He's your teacher. He's your guide. He leads you and guides you into all truths. And so um, having said all of that, I want to, again, wish you a Merry, oh, Merry Christmas. Ha! I want to wish you a Happy New Year and pray that uh, in your 2014 is as amazing as you are because you are truly an amazing creation by God, of God, um, for God. And you have a destiny and a purpose in life. You are significant. You are relevant. You are very, very important um, to to the world around you. You don't even realize it sometimes how important you are because people are watching you. So keep going. Don't stop. Don't quit. You're on a right path. Don't give up. Um, look inside. Look around you for people who can help you get out of wherever you are if you need help. Um, pray for assistance. God will send it. And um, just keep helping other people. You know, it's really, really cold in the world today. I mean, physically, like in the world, it's like it's a cold front a polar vortex or some craziness going on out there. And it's really cold. So help your neighbors, um, help help your friends, just display the love of God and the, lo the love of just humanity, you know, survival, help each other. And um, I want to let you know quickly uh, that I was going through the website looking at some of the things that we've done over the past year and we did a word immersion last February I really want to do it again so I'm gonna use the same notes from last year and um, repost it uh, so that you can do it if you want to and uh, we're gonna go through the process um, to the through the word immersion again because the word is uh, is our loin? The written word is our loin belt of truth. It's a part of our spiritual armor, our armor of God. So um, we're going to do that, 
and uh, it'll probably start the first week of the first day of February. Um, and it's going to be amazing. So um, I will see you guys next week. This is Madeline Berry, and I'm signing off talking about the helmet of salvation in the armor of God. I'll see you next week. I love you guys.